What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. So President Joe Biden is set to meet with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and maybe, maybe Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell here over the debt limit ceiling. Mitch McConnell here is already saying that he won't back any debt limit ceiling increase without substantive reforms. He signed on to a letter stating he and more than 40 members of the Senate Republican Conference will not back, quote, any bill that raises the debt ceiling without substantive spending and budget reforms, according to sources. The letter is addressed to Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and would be Mitch McConnell's clearest statement to date about what he is willing to support to avoid a national default next month in June when the federal government is projected to run out of money. The Senate Republican Conference is united behind the House Republican Conference in support of spending cuts and structural budget reform at a starting point for negotiations on the debt ceiling. The letter states, as such, we will not be voting for cloture on any bill that raises the debt ceiling without substantive spending and budget reforms, which means a lot of cuts. President Joe Biden comes out swinging on debt ceiling negotiations. Here is what President Biden has to say. Take a listen here. And the budget I proposed to, that we're going to propose back on March 9, I think it was in the first couple of weeks of March, that budget, if it were to be passed, would cut the deficit another three trillion dollars, three trillion dollars over the next 10 years. Unfortunately, our I won't say Republican because I think they're not they're pretty well divided, but our MAGA Republicans in Congress are threatening to do all this progress by letting us, quote, default on the debt unless we agree to their demands. The two are totally unrelated. Whether you pay the debt or not doesn't have a damn thing to do with what your budget is, what your budget is, where you're going to spend money, how you're going to raise the money, how, what, what are you going to cut, what are you going to... That's the... They're two separate issues, two. And let's get it straight. They're trying to hold the debt hostage to us to agree to some draconian cuts, magnificently difficult and damaging cuts. But I'll get into that in a little bit. But unfortunately, uh, they're threatening to undo, uh, um, uh, undo all this progress by letting us default. Um, and uh, their budget that they promoted, that it was attached to their debt ceiling increase, um, but they tied them together now. I want to make that clear. You all know this, I know, but for the listeners, They've tied it together. They say, we're not going to we're not going to increase the debt that every president has done for the last six million years here. Uh, I mean, ne ne never hadn't done anything but that unless you pass our budget as we're proposing. Now, their budget would put 21 million people at risk of losing Medicaid. It would cut federal law enforcement by 28,000 personnel. 28,000, FBI, DEA, et cetera. It would cut 100,000 teachers and support staff. It would cut 30 million, 30 million veterans' health care visits. And I increased the VA budget because the veterans were in such difficult shape, having so much trouble getting appointments and the like. According to Moody's, not, not, not the Democratic Party, according to Moody's, their budget plan would eliminate 780,000 jobs. Say it again, it would eliminate 780,000 jobs, according to Moody's. And America's debt has accumulated over 200 years, and my predecessor, in the four years he was president, increased it by that total debt by 40 percent. Four years. Four years. Let's be clear. And by the way, even during that period, all the Republicans voted to, uh, the Republican Party voted to increase the debt limit, like the only responsible thing you could do. At any rate, let's be clear. This is no small part about paying our bills that we accumulated, that were accumulated not by me, not by my administration, but by former presidents and previous Congresses. Also note here that Biden said here in an interview he was not ready yet to invoke the 14th Amendment 
to avoid a debt default, which apparently is an option that has never been done. It's very controversial whether or not it can be. President Joe Biden said on Friday he was not ready to invoke the 14th Amendment to avoid the United States defaulting on its debts as early as June 1st, which is only about three weeks away now at this point. Comments which, for the first time, suggest that he has not ruled out the options, saying, quote, I have not gotten there yet, he said in an interview with MSNBC when asked about the possibility of invoking the amendment. The divided Congress is running out of time to raise the federal government's debt ceiling, with the Treasury Department warning it could be unable to pay its bills as early as June 1st. If Congress fails to act, some legal experts say Biden has another option to avert the crisis, invoking the Fourth Amendment, 14th Amendment, to the U.S. Constitution to ensure the United States can continue to pay its bills. Section 4 of the amendment adopted after the Civil War, 1861-1865, this is how old this is, right, states that the, quote, validity of the public debt of the United States shall not be questioned. But the clause has largely been unaddressed by the courts. Some experts have suggested that Biden could invoke this amendment to raise the debt ceiling on his own if Congress does not act. That would almost certainly lead to a prolonged legal wrangling, which could unsettle financial markets at the least. White House and other administration officials have examined the possibility, but may have dismissed it as a last-ditch solution unlikely to survive a court challenge, according to a person briefed on those discussions. Some people say the Fed is already preparing For a default and for toxic uh, assets like we just seen with the failed banks, where the failed banks had what's called toxic, toxic assets and underwater assets where one bank had to buy another bank, in in some cases for a dollar, and basically had underwater assets and uh, one bank had to overtake another bank. And uh, will that happen here yet again as we get close to a default? Even in the case of not having a default, it could happen. Because as we see here, interest rates rising, people getting panicky about their money. Uh, We've seen this here in the past. When the U.S. got close to a default here in the past, the entire country's credit rating got downgraded. So that could happen here again as we're less than a month away from this happening. And they're just sitting down to meet here. Uh, Yeah, so rocky roads ahead at the bare minimum. Also, we now have Supreme Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas under new scrutiny now for letting a GOP mega donor uh, cover his child's tuition Clarence Thomas now saying that um, that being a Supreme Court justice is not worth doing for what they pay. Uh, yeah, if you, if you can't make this stuff up, right? So he's saying now that a, being a Supreme Court justice is not worth doing. If you can actually believe that he's saying this, right? Uh, And now a lot of people are questioning if the Supreme Court has enough guardrails on it or any guardrails on it at all, to to be honest, because really it seems like there isn't. Are there any consequences for anything with Supreme Court justices? Not really. Not really. And um, to be honest, I think that the old age of Supreme Court justices serve for life is a little bit crazy, to be honest. And um, the the American people don't really get to vote in a Supreme Court justice. And then they serve there forever, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Um, is kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. And uh, after that long of a time, some of these Supreme Court justices 
no matter what side they're on, it just seems like they kind of get maybe a little bit corrupt. Um, after being there that long, it seems like they kind of lose what they were there for at the beginning. And um, you guys can let me know your thoughts here on this. But, um, you know, it, it seems like what they said at the beginning when they were getting elected and what they're doing 30, 40 years later, it, it seems a little bit different. You know, um, the status quo has changed a little bit. You can let me know your thoughts here on this. But um, should Supreme Court justices serve life sentences? Sounds, sounds kind of weird, actually, saying a life, lifetime sentence of being a Supreme Court justice. But it sounds crazy. They don't even get they don't even go through a reelection process. You know, I, I a lot of people say, uh, you know, oh, senators and, and House representatives, there should be term limits. There should be term limits. But they actually go through a reelection process. You know, House of Representatives, every two years you get to vote on them. So you can vote them out every two years. Senators, at least every six years, you get to vote on them. You can vote them out every six years. Supreme Court justices, you can't vote them out if you wanted to. There's no voting process. If you want to vote out any Supreme Court justice at all, you're SOL. The, the American people can do nothing about it. So let me know your thoughts on this here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here with everything going on here in our country on a daily basis. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe down below. Click the bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And thank you so much for liking and sharing these videos here. Here's some videos you should watch next. Click here to see what's coming in less than a week, and it's going to be pretty major. And also here is what the Fed just announced, which is going to affect millions of Americans. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.